All right, guys, back at home with the uh, wild ramps, aka leaks, and also I found a few other things I wanted to show you guys. I also found these, I used to call them hillbilly onions. These are actually nodding onions. You might hear some kids in the background yelling, yelling they're all playing. But these are called nodding wild onions. They're right in the Peterson Guide, and it's because of the ends, how they nod over. They actually will have a pink flower that grows off them and falls off. But these are the actual wild onions. There's also a form that looks just like close to these. They're just, you know, typical wild onions and also a wild garlic. And this is, you know, definitely, guys, always be safe. I use the Peterson wild edible guide great book you know you can't beat these field guides and also there's a lot of seminars you can go to there's a lot of free ones out there like the gun show places have them just to get you in to try to get you to buy some get ammo and guns fin fern feather has them i go to a lot of morel seminars just for the fun of it on them but i've been doing this stuff for a long time also but right in this book you know also, we have our ramps, and it shows it right in that Peterson guide. Beautiful. Three to two leaves, purple stem, nice bulb. You can use these for greens. You can pickle them. When they get old, you know, in the summertime, they get older, the onions, the onion bulb would get much bitter compared to what it is now. This is more of the garlicky onion taste, but they'll get much more bitter. And what will happen is... Uh, you pickle them and you take away that bitterness. The Indians used to do that, early Native Americans used to do that and consider it a delicacy. But this is also in the Peterson Wild Edible Guides. But it is a very good book, you know, so do your homework guys. You want to come home, because I did want to show you this, right growing next to the wild onions is this. Leaves the three, leave it be. Kind of want to stick to that sometimes. This is snow on the mountain. Deadly poison. So we want to make sure when you're picking, the, this was growing right in with these wild onions. It's a very uh, evasive plant. It really takes over. You see it a lot of people's yards for uh, looks and, you know, for landscaping. But it's deadly for your uh, pets also. But give you a kind of a closer look at that. That's snow on the mountain. Deadly poison. It's even in a field, Peterson Field Guide saying how poisonous this is. I tend to stick to easy things when it comes to wild edibles. Your dandelions, clover, things like that, you know, stinging nettle. But, like I said, guys, I, I like to do my research. I even have the, you know, you can get these for every state. Field guide here by San Tequila, I like to say. It's, it, looks, it looks like you'd pronounce it Stan Tequila. Tequila. Trees of Ohio field guide, and that helps me identify the trees and uh, what types of wood, hardwoods, what's good for making bows. Uh, also, where the morels are, I kind of try to want to identify the trees so that way I know when I'm morel hunting to look for those trees. But just thought I'd share that with you. I got a nice big batch of ramps here again, and I am getting a little low. I do dehydrate these. And put them in a mason jar. This is last year's batch. But what I'm going to do is make that pesto up, guys. I'm going to clean some of these up, cut off the roots, and wash off the mud, and make that pesto up for you guys so you can see how to do that. And then we'll take that, we'll save that pesto, keep it in the fridge, and we'll take it out in the woods and make us up a Another recipe for you guys to watch us cook up something and eat and make you hungry again. But hang in there, guys. One thing I did want to show you guys before I start, I start cleaning all these is when you're cleaning them, there's going to be this like slimy outer shell to them when you get them wet. And it comes off real easy. You can see that. I'm going to be taking them over to the sink here through the strainer and washing them up. And you just cut off these roots. What I like to do is go back out. If I'm going out the very next day, I'll keep these roots in some uh, water and just go replant them, and hopefully it'll help bring them up next year. Sometimes you can just do it right on the field, 
trim off the roots and just throw them right back into the ground where you've dug them up but this just seems to be an easier way for me so hang in there I'll be right back guys alright guys got this stuff washed up got my items prepared to show you guys how to make this uh, pesto I was talking about and you can like I say you can use this pesto on a chicken pork steak you can even put it over a ravioli this these ramps came out beautiful nice batch right here guys let me get a few more things together and we'll get going on this pesto so hang in there alright this is real simple to make what I'm going to be using is some black pepper some grated parmesan cheese doesn't have to be refrigerated great for camping some parsley which is completely optional salt and some virgin olive oil and also of course the wild rams and what I'm going to be using is this uh, food processor now you probably could do this on a pestle or a stone but while I got the modern technology I'm going to use it because this is something I'm going to make up now keep in my fridge and when I go out camping or out in the woods to cook something up I'll be able to bring it with me and be set and ready to go for a good uh, addition to a meal so let's get this going guys okay first I'm going to get me some nice ramps they are beautiful nice big bulbs on them nice broad leaves what I'm going to do is cut some of them up I just want to break them down so it'll chop up easy. I'm going to be using the green too because that's going to give it that green look. But you can also boil these down, cook them down like greens. And uh, it kind of takes the sting out of them. These do have a little bit of bite to them too, a peppery bite. That's why it's not going to take much pepper. And you know, I don't have any real set amounts. I'm probably using a third of the Parmesan. And a dash of pepper, dash of salt. It doesn't take a whole lot of this too because these pack a punch. I'm trying to do this and make sure I'm getting everything in the camera for you. Use one more nice one. And like I say, I may add a little bit more here and there to get it just right. Maybe one more, guys. And this is good. I like it best over the chicken. Okay. Olive oil time. Mm, guessing. Maybe a quarter cup. Might have to add a little more. Fresh cracked pepper. Eh, about that much. Some salt. Like I say, the parsley is optional. I like to give a little bit of more, a little parsley flavor in there too. About that much. And the Parmesan cheese. I go about halfway with that. And that's probably about a third cup in there. I went about halfway for now because I know I'm going to be adding a little bit more olive oil until I get the right consistency. Okay. Let's see how this does in the old food processor. Looking pretty good. Kind of give you 
a look at this stuff. Oh, man, it looks perfect, guys. Almost looks like uh, guacamole. Look at that. And that is just awesome, guys, over uh, chicken. I like it best over chicken or like a wild uh, game bird. It's really good. Like pheasant or Cornish hen even. I'll give that the taste. Oh, man, guys. I wish you could taste this. Oh, man. So definitely, guys, this just give me the initiative to go out and cook you something in the woods now. So hang in there. And I'll probably add this video to another one with the cooking video. But for now, thanks for watching. And look for part two of this. Take care, guys. Thanks for all your comments, views, and support. Man, did that come out good. Believe me, this is awesome over chicken or a game bird. Take care, guys.